What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Today is a very exciting day. Um, it's been about a week since our last video, and we've finally got our oyster mushroom pairings ready for transfer. So if you haven't checked out our um, breeding series for 2022, it's called Immaculate Inoculation. It started off on Christmas Eve and we inoculated um, different spore dilutions out onto auger um, petri dishes. And some of them had mated in the same petri dish because of the higher concentration of spores. But the oyster mushrooms, um, our local Colorado oyster strain, um, the, the dilution that we used allowed us to collect separated haploid mycelium. So that is just half of the genetics. Then we grew those out onto Petri dishes. Um, you can see that in the video here. I'll post links to all the videos up to this point. Um, but then we put them on their own Petri dishes with specific other haploids. And what happened was they grew out and some of them were compatible. So that means that they fused their mycelium together and now they are a whole mushroom organism that can produce fruits. And then there's a couple really good examples here of incompatible mating pairings. And what happens is they come together and they don't have the right genetics. So what they do is they'll form a zone of inhibition. And that's just a region where they kind of fight for resources, but then eventually they'll just fizzle out. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and then I'll point out the different pairings that I think are gonna do really well. And then some of the, the incompatible pairings with the zone of inhibition. And then I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll go through my transfers onto fresh auger peachy dishes. And then once those grow out, they will go out onto grain and then we'll um, follow up with the fruiting. Hopefully in the early spring, um, we'll get to select the strongest oyster mushroom. I'm really looking for a bright white oyster with um, some, some fragrance to it. So this Colorado strain is really nice because it tolerates um, pretty high and low temperatures. It's very versatile. However, um, it, it doesn't have that really fluffy bite that um, the, the commercial blue oyster or um, the king oyster from Mossy Creek Mushrooms. I'm looking for that really like thick, smoky, smokiness flavor almost. And I was hoping that they would cross with some blue oyster strains, but um, it just never, never came to fruition this year. So I'll be going back and um, back crossing more strains in the future, but this one looks really promising. So I'll flip the camera around and show you guys what's going on. Okay guys, so these are the oyster mushroom pairings from our breeding project. And I just wanna point out the super obvious pairings like this one and eight right here. You can see this really thick band and that's a good sign that they have exchanged genetic material. You can see one and three, one and four, one and five. So it seems like one was kind of a slower grower but it was very compatible with all these different phenotypes. That's a pretty good band right there. So you can come over now to one and six and notice how there's this gap right here. So that is what is called the zone of inhibition. So you can see one and six are not compatible. But if you come over here, we've got two and six compatible. So that tells us that this six is most likely a haploid still. Um, I mean, there could be mutations that happen, but the fact that it's pairing here and not pairing here means that these are incompatible. And then you can see Summer Oyster 1 paired up with 5. So that kind of validates the haploid of number 1. So now if we come over to number 3 and 6, 
you can see kind of a zone of inhibition going on here where three and eight has this nice banding. So before we get into the selections, um, I just wanted to kind of go over this really nice banding here. This is the ideal pairing that I'm looking for. It's got, you know, most of the plate covered within a week and a really nice banding. So I get a lot of questions about whether or not you should take your sectors from the middle or either side. Honestly, I don't really know. I always shoot for the middle just because it seems like there's the, the most rigorous growth where they meet. However, I think that you will be able to kind of pick and choose from wherever on the Petri dish. I just try to avoid that because on there could be contaminants hiding under the surface that we just don't see. But that's what I prefer. I'm not sure if that's you know the best practice, but um, I'm going to be taking my sectors from that really thick banding where the two colonies meet. Okay, I've got my workstation set up like so. Um, usually I do this kind of work in my vertical flow hood, but it's uh, completely filled up with different liquid cultures. So I'm going to work in front of this flow hood. And it's always good to just see from um, multiple angles and um, different methodologies for using a horizontal flow hood versus a vertical flow hood. Um, I also am usually a little bit more lenient when it comes to reusing blades with the same species of mushrooms. However, these are all different phenotypes. So I'm going to use a fresh sterilized blade and a freshly sterilized blade handle for every single plate because I'm going to be storing them on generation one slants so that in the future I'll have the original mother culture um, from all these different phenotypes. So that's kind of my setup here. I've got mostly MEA or malt extract agar plates. I've got a couple black charcoal and potato dextrose. It's just what I had laying around. Um, and then there's this grate underneath these plates here just to prevent the condensation because underneath this table is pretty cold. And um, I wanted to make sure that when they were drying off and heating up to room temperature that they didn't um, collect any contaminants on the outside of the petri dish so that it has a better chance of being sterile so i'll flip this camera around and kind of go through the entire procedure and then um, we'll follow up in a future video with how these are growing out and then they're, they'll go into grain and then bulk and then fruiting so give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video so far. Um, it's about to get pretty exciting and um, I'll show you guys how I transfer my haploid to haploid mated pairings onto their own petri dish and into slants for long-term storage. All right, so I did mask up for this procedure. Um, usually the horizontal or the vertical flow hood has a bar here that prevents any air from getting down and these are generation one cultures so I'm trying to be extra sterile um, but I already wiped everything down with alcohol and I just wanted to kind of show you the setup before we get into it all right so starting with the isopropyl I'll just work my way over from right to left. So we've got summer oyster, two mated with eight, very rigorous culture, or vigorous. Um, All right, so there you have it. We've got our slant, our mated culture, and then this is what will be used for production.
give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video on um, selecting our phenotypes for the Colorado summer oyster. Uh, we'll be moving these onto green. So we've got 19 different phenotypes of the Colorado oyster and then about 21 phenotypes of Namico, brown oyster, and golden oyster. Um, we've got a few more spores that are kind of popping up late, but I don't know if I'll get to those um, during this project. I might have to put them on hold. And then um, we will be moving these into grain next. So I'll do some videos on grain. Stay tuned um, for those. And then they'll go into bulk substrate and we'll do a full run of fruiting um, and go through our process for that. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm just gonna pair film these up and set them in the incubator and they'll be ready in about a week to 10 days from now. And I'll be um, doing some grain spawn because I've got those about 12 other phenotypes um, that are between this stage and already in jars. Um, so I'll be going over that at the end of the week and then um, I'll keep you guys posted. Hopefully we get some really nice fruits. There was one weird looking plate that kind of had multiple um, multiple areas of um, inhibition. So I feel like, you know, if, if there's any kind of sectoring that happens on the next Petri dish, then maybe it was already a, a mated pairing on that initial isolation. It's hard, hard to say without fruiting, but um, you can understand the process by watching this video. All right, guys, um, I'll pair film these, flip it around, and until next time, much love.